welcome back to Vigor. It's your boy Stealth Jet, and I'm back in the mix. As I promised last night at midnight, I'm going to show you this encounter. So that way you know, to my, all my new viewers out there who are just, maybe this is like, maybe your second or third video that you're seeing in my channel, or this is literally the first video that you're seeing in my channel. This is how I play. Okay, so if this, if my play style interests you, why not subscribe to the channel and, you know, comment a little bit, help my channel grow. Because from what I'm told, a person named Half Metal Fox has the same play style as me and nobody else from what I'm getting from my community, well, from the JSS, the Jet Stealth, the Jet Stealth Squadron that I call my subscribers. So if you're new, subscribe. It helps me grow, helps the, uh, helps the squadron grow. Okay, so with that being said, I'm still going to show you all the tape at the end of this episode, but I'm going to show you the encounter first, because I think this is kind of, you know, it, it needs to be seen, right? Okay, so I'm going to say this right now. This map, Death Forest, and Victorian Station are like my bottom two maps in the game. I don't like them because the loot on them is scarce right i mean yeah the victorian station has the better loot because it has like houses in the middle of the map pretty much but on victorian well no on diverg forest all the stuff is in the town and that's it so with that in mind i'm not expecting a whole lot coming out of this encounter which is why you see me here just checking my surroundings because I know at least two people spawn in that direction and another person spawns behind the yellow house across this road. So I'm just like, I need to hear gunshots, if not footsteps, because if I don't hear anything, then that creeps me out. As a lone wolf, I rely on sound and other people's engagements. That's what I, that's what I rely upon. And you see, there's nothing in this house. So I'm just like, dang, okay. Check the road. Don't see anybody walking. Don't see anybody walking that way either. Which is a good thing, because that means people are smart in this game, and they, and they don't walk down the center of a road to get spotted. I'll go down here into this trench, where this sewer pipe is, I guess. And then a container goes off. So... There goes one very important landmark in the game. Time safe is unlocked. Okay, so pretty much at least two people are in the middle of the map. Noted. Okay, one conversation has been used. That means there's a chance that somebody's back here. And so I'm approaching this real carefully. Because all it takes is one wrong step and I'm soft spotted. Another conversation been used. So there's a 66% chance that somebody's here. And now somebody used a detector, which is all the way on the other side of the map. Don't gotta worry about it. They're not teams here. And I think I just seen somebody right there coming around the corner of that house. So I'm gonna duck behind this rock and wait, wait just a moment and see if they do anything. But then I get the the idea of relocation. If you're new to this channel, I talk about something called the art of relocation. And you can find that. I think I made that an entire video. You can find that in my playlist too. Basically, what you do, and this comes with my playstyle, or with the playstyle that I have. Um, what you do is you let your enemy see you stay in one spot for like two to three seconds. And then you disappear on them. Once you disappear, it's up to you to remain hidden and go around and catch him by surprise. And so that's what I'm doing right here. I'm trying to keep my noise as low as possible. That's why I'm crouch walking. If you go back and watch through any of my playlists, you notice I crouch walk a lot. And I know that army crawling makes noise in and of itself too. But I like to remain low noise but high awareness. I've not yet mastered the uh, wipe the entire lobby 
playstyle play style of high noise, high awareness, high um, bullet volume for my M249. I don't have that in my skill set. But like I said, if you want to just go through my playlist, go right ahead. Alright, so now, I'm keeping my head covered by hiding behind these rocks for the moment. Now, if you're asking yourself, Jet, why aren't you crouch walking up here? They will see me before I see them. Thanks to how this ridge line is shaped. And there we go. So I seen him walking around the right side of the house. So what I'm going to do is still remain unseen, but just check. And now if you're wondering why I put my weapon on my back all the time, it's because you move a little bit faster when your weapon is holstered. A little teeny bit faster. It's not much of a difference, but when you're running away from somebody and they have their weapon in their hands, yeah, it, it makes a difference. And you see they're gone now. And so I'm like, okay, was that the same guy? Is it look like two different guys? One of them had on a vest and this guy had on a raincoat. So maybe one person didn't have a weapon or they, they didn't see each other. And the latter option is really doubtful in my opinion. Because if they seen each other, at least one shot would have been fired at the guy with no weapon. But anyways, this side of the map was dangerous. It was dangerous until somebody got the comm station and moved the airdrop. Now, if the airdrop was over here, everybody would come in this side of the map. But they're not. So what I'm going to do is mind my business, head over this way, but keep an eye out and an ear out, two ears out, for any sounds that I might hear. And thank God that car alarm didn't go off. But if it did, if it did, I would have had no choice but to run into the forest. Because I would have had some kind of cover, some kind of visual cover at that. But what's my next move? My next move is to go into the town. Even though we've seen both the time safe and the container looted like I don't know what. It's, it's a matter of principle. There may be some stuff there. There are plenty of cars, but there are also plenty of car alarms. You know what I'm saying? So, my playstyle relies heavily upon loot and audio cues. That's what my playstyle relies on. And so, with that in mind, I'm just going to walk through this forest because usually you don't encounter anybody in the forest, so I'm comfortable with walking through here. And I'm going to keep my pace up. One thing I realize in this game is that you got to be quick. Like, you just you just have to be quick. Not run everywhere quick, but get from point A to point B in a short amount of time kind of quick. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so I'm going to pull up to this rock. And this is what I like to call the death intersection. Because pretty much, like, at least one player every five encounters dies here. At least. But nobody's here. Notice how I'm crawling through here is because I want to keep my sound low, but my awareness high. It's hard to hear everything when you're making all the noise, if that makes any sense. And so I'm crouch walking in the open, given I'm a big old walking target. But if anybody shoots at me, that reveals their location. So I know I'm not alone. Risky, risky tactic. Risky is all hell. But, you know, I'm going to need that. I'm going to need that information. Walking through this house right here, cleaned out. Besides that one thing that I missed just now, I, I noticed that in post. But cleaned out. That could have been a picture. But anyways, car looted. Car to my right, looted. The plane is near. Get ready for the airdrop. No, the plane is on the way. So this pretty much marks like the, the halfway point in the encounter. And I haven't gotten anything useful. Haven't gotten anything useful. I'm going to check this red house. So there are 
three things I want to talk about in that one engagement. I stopped talking and turned the volume up in a video because if you were to go back and rewind, well, yeah, rewind the video for a little bit, you can hear a very, very faint splash. And that faint splash could have been just a river making ambient noise or ambient noise. But rivers don't splash like that. Thing number two I want to talk about, whenever I play this game, I always close my doors. Always. That's to slow down your pursuers. When you close your door, you're leaving potential pursuers thinking that, oh, um, nobody been here yet. So let me loot this house. And all the time that they're looting the house that you close the door on, you're getting seconds on them. You're avoiding potential gunfights. Thing number three, when he opened, I mean, I could have, I could have ended bad, because you seen I was crouched in front of that window. If he had a weapon, all he had to do was shoot through the window. But from the looks of it, he didn't see me, because I was crouched in front of the window and not standing up. And this is how bad the loot is on this map. Even the guy I killed didn't have anything on them. That's how bad the loot is on this map. But yeah, that's an example of my playstyle. I rely heavily on audio cues. So if you've seen just now, I was looking at the map when the car alarm was going off. Notice how I moved my cursor upward. That was me making a mental note to myself that the guy is probably moving into the town. And so I don't go investigate where the car alarm is. I go investigate the potential direction of where a guy is going to be at or of where a guy is going to take. And you heard that just now? He's here. He might have heard me. But I definitely heard him. He took one footstep, and that's all information I need to know. Somebody's here. And so I'm going to back off from where that footstep is so I can get a wide angle on potentially where he's at. And I'm going to sit still for a moment. Given this is dangerous as heck, because anybody can shoot anybody from any distance if they aim right, and I'm here in the open, standing still. But I'm going to relocate, and boom, there he is. I was not alone. Car alarm once again. Set up an ambush. If you notice, I usually set my weapons a single unless they're like danger close to me. Because I don't like having to worry about recoil. I'd rather rely on my trigger finger than to spray and pray and hope I hit their head. You know what I'm saying? So, with that out the way, little that guy clean. I'm gonna check this out. That little RV, get a jammer. Nice. So, I'm gonna do something that I usually do in all my encounters. I'm gonna take the furthest exit. There's a saying I always actually wait a minute. Before I do that, I'm gonna check this container. But watch what I do. I'm trying to see if there's anybody outside. When you're sitting here and you're looting stuff, look, you stay still. And all it takes is for one person to be hiding in any tree around here, and there goes my head. But I just confirmed that nobody's here. Now, another significant moment just happened. Notice I got pinged by PSD, a portable signal detector. Watch the airdrop at the top of your screen. They got it. Nobody gets an airdrop that quick. Nobody gets an airdrop that quick unless they know that they are safe. There was nobody here. There was nobody between myself and the guy who was near the airdrop. How do I know that? Because the, but, but the time between him using his PSD and him pinging me was, well, not, not really him. Him pinging me and him getting the airdrop was real short. Real short. So he felt safe. Because he is safe. He checked. I'm the nearest person to him. The airdrop is all the way on the other side of the map. And he knows he's safe on the other side. Because if somebody was over there, his PSD would have said, Hey, somebody's at this exit at the top of the map. Don't take this exit. But since he uses PSD, he didn't see any red dots on that side of the map. So he knows that he is safe from 360 degrees. What I just said was, his nearest outlander is me. 
but check this out. There's, here's the other side of the coin too. He pinged me, right? So I know that there's nobody between myself and him. But what I don't know is who is between myself and this exit that's all the way down the road. There's a saying that I always have in Vigor. There's a saying I always have in Vigor. You are never safe. Parentheses, unless you hit a detector and you realize that nobody's in the encounter. So, what I just said was, I don't know who's at this exit. I do know that there's nobody between myself and the guy who has the airdrop. I do know that. And you see that glint right there? I thought for sure there was somebody aiming at me. So I'm gonna keep running. I don't know who's at this exit. There, I'm, I'm sure I am positive. I am 100% positive. Y'all and that play this game, went to an exit, thought it was safe. All of a sudden, crows, headshot, boom, you're dead. Worst case scenario, contact bomb near a car. Boom, blow up, you get blown the heck up. But in this scenario, nobody's here. And I always keep running and then take cover behind a really suitable piece of cover. And I'm out of here. Boom. And so, that is the encounter that's given me the opportunity to listen to the cassette tape. Now, given that wasn't the best encounter, I mean, yeah, two kills, hurrah, hurrah. But I'd rather find a picture with food in it. Because food gives you airdrops, and airdrops may give you plans, and may give you crowns. I'm trying to get a battle pass. So, yeah, I need the raw XP from all these crates and all these airdrops. Now, given, given XP, well, the season pass can give you airdrops. I know that, and I'm very thankful for it. But I'd rather have the full sweep of donating food every week and that's why i keep playing this game too i'm trying to get my food uh with my passive income of food like my box of um plants and my rat traps all the way up to max level and also my outhouses too so that's why i keep playing this game but i'm gonna demount all my stuff so that way whenever i queue up again i know i'm empty and i can just start fresh over again and here's a moment that y'all been waiting for cassette tape right there and also vss too i love the vss so we're gonna yeah I'm, i might use that some sometime soon but yeah cassette tape we're going to see what this man has to say because the focus of season 10 is lower so i'm going to pull up to my cassette tape player which is actually actually in your weapons bunker Wasteland for months. After that, I realized that 
No one was coming back for us. The air base, it was all black with ash and blueprints. They even blew their brains out right there on the runway. So I gave up on home. Decided to make another. since my last recording. I've been uh, picking up some kind of messages and ciphers coming from the radio signals, and every few days there's overflights, tactical airlifters, transporter planes, like the ones we rolled in on. That means they're carrying something. But what? And where's it coming from? Call me crazy, but I, I think someone might be trying to tell me something. Look at me, still talking on a tape recorder for nobody. I must be going crazy. Now, if I can just put together the last code, I think I might be onto something. Whoa, whoa. Easy there, pal. We're here to help you out. Come with us, we'll explain everything. Who the hell are you? We'll explain everything once we leave this place. It's not safe here. Listen, the way I see it, you have two options. One, you come with us, where we can provide you with food, shelter, and explanations. Or two, stay here alone and see how far you go. All right, I need to I need to pause the music right now. I got a lot of stuff to talk about. A lot of stuff to talk about. Okay, so the origin of Adam is in Anakin. Anakin got blown the heck up, and he was left by himself watching bombs drop and all the other stuff. We get that. So Anakin is more than likely, at least for now, until I get some more tapes, Anakin is the origin point of the game right but what about the tutorial what if adam left anakin and then he pretty much passed out in the tunnel then he woke up in a tunnel and we play as him in the in the tutorial but that doesn't make any sense because who are the people that barge in and say hey we need your help so adam could have left anakin then settled somewhere else. Went on a went on a hunt for food. Passed out in the tunnel. Woke up. Radio was next to him. Boom. That's our tutorial. But if that's the case, who is this man? Who who are we playing as in this game? Given we can change our archetype from man to woman and all that good stuff. But who are we playing as? He also mentioned tactical airlifters, cargo planes. They must be carrying something. Is Adam talking about the arrow drops in our encounters? And that's a good point. Because where do the planes come from? He did mention the airfield. He did mention an airfield near Anakin. But where are the cargo planes coming from? And why are they dropping stuff in the middle of the Outlands? Is it meant for us? Or are we just, do we always just so happen to be there and so we take it? Was it actually meant for people who need it? Find out more on my next episode. Until next time, peace.